Welcome to Capital Baptist Church, and welcome to our current series called The God Questions. And today we're going to be answering our final question in this series, and that is, how can I know God personally? How can I know God personally? So whether you're here live in the auditorium, uh, I welcome you, or whether you're uh, watching uh, online or listening online, uh, welcome to this very important message as we talk about how can I know God personally. Please take your Bible or your device and go to Philippians chapter 3. And today we're going to be starting here in Philippians 3, uh, 10 through 11. And I find it very interesting. Uh, you know, I designed uh, the, uh, uh, what we call the key verses. I do that usually a month or two before a series starts. And so like two to three months ago, I selected Philippians 3, uh, 10 and 11. And specifically verse 10 is the key verse. <clears throat> and at that time, I didn't have a green light on what I was going to preach on next. And... Uh, I just found it really interesting that God had a plan, you know, that we would kind of look at Philippians today to kind of get us tuned up for, for next, uh, next Sunday and for the next 10 Sundays. So I thought that was kind of fun, kind of interesting how God knew where we were going and he wanted to get us started a little bit early, okay? So welcome to this message and our text today, Philippians chapter 3, 10 through 11. Now, uh, I'm a big believer in the leadership principle of begin with the end in mind. I just, I, I literally think like that every day, you know. In other words, you know, when we do this, what, what do we want it to look like on the other side? And uh, so, as I've stated in the introduction, uh, during these seven Sundays and seven weeks, what we're hoping to see happen through the God Question series is, number one, to gain a better knowledge of God. That's number one. Number two, a closer connection with him. So this is what we're hoping is happening, you know. Now, the first six messages really hit hard on that first part. Uh, yeah, we learned how to have a closer connection with God, but it was really a lot about a knowledge of God. And we answered questions like, is God real? And, of course, the answer is yes, but why? You know, all these answers, a lot of us can answer yes, no, whatever. Uh, but do you know why you believe God is real? And so we talked about why. And then is the Bible God's word? The answer again is yes, but again the question is why? And we talked about why I believe and I hope you believe the Bible is God's word. Then we talked about what is God like and Dr. Bird did an awesome job. And the main emphasis about that message was God is relational. That's what he's like. He's many things, but he's a relational God. He, he wants to have a relationship uh, with you. Then we talked about why does God allow suffering? And we talked about the fact that we got this problem called sin and depravity. All of us have it. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, because of that, we see through a dark glass. In other words, we look at life and things don't seem to make sense and we suffer and it just doesn't make any sense to us. You know, why are we going through this? But yet, in that message, we talked about five points of light. Things that we can know, light that we do have in the midst of struggling uh, with our darkness. And then did God create the world? Carl, Carl, Carl Kirby was our guest speaker. He did a great job on that message. Again, yes, God created the world, but why? And Carl gave us uh, reasons why uh, we believe, or I believe, and I hope you believe, uh, God indeed created the world. And then why hasn't God answered my prayers? Last Sunday I gave five possible responses to your prayer requests. Five different responses that God uh, gives when it comes uh, to prayer. So these messages were heavy on getting a better knowledge of God. I, mean, I think we've learned a lot about God during this time. And yes, I'm sure in knowing that you know, it's drawn you closer to him. But today, the final message is going to lean really heavy on the second part, a closer connection with with God. Because today we're going to talk about how can I know God personally? How can I know God personally? Philippians chapter 3, 10 through 11, Paul the Apostle writes in this, which is my favorite book of the Bible, and I'll, I'll give a testimony next Sunday. I mean, this book has changed my life. Uh, because of this book, I will never be the same again in my life. It's by far the most impactful book in my life, the book of Philippians. 
Philippians 3, 10 through 11, Paul says that I may know him. That I may know him. Paul is saying, you know what? I want to know God. I want to know God. And he says in knowing God, you know, you got to go through the power of his resurrection. You know, there's power in the resurrection. Praise God. And next Sunday, we're gonna, next weekend, we're going to be lifting up the resurrection and the power that's in the resurrection. But not only do we have power as part of knowing God, we also have to have pain, right? Part of our pain is, is in our life, and, and we have to fellowship in his sufferings, you know. Uh, you know, today we're going to remember uh, Jesus' sacrifice for us. We're, we're going to remember the pain that he went through. We're going we're gonna to ha- take the bread, and, and we're going to talk about the body of Jesus, the pain of the body. We're going to talk about the cup and, and Jesus shedding his blood, the pain of that whole uh, process, and yet we will often say, well, man, I don't want to suffer. Well, I don't want to suffer either. Uh, but you know what? Part of knowing God is to suffer, okay? And, and you know, it's kind of actually kind of hypocritical to say, oh, I'm so thankful for Jesus. He's willing to suffer. I don't want to suffer. You know, that's, you know that, that doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, to know him, you're going to experience power. To know him, you've got to experience pain. And God uses all of that together to conform us to be like Jesus, to conform us to be like Jesus in his death and his resurrection, uh, verse number 11. So let's go to page 2 and let's talk about this, uh, how can I know God personally. And before we get into that, I want to give you some observations, three quick observations. Now the big thing and the most important thing I'm going to say today is I'm going to say it right now. And that is the way you personally know God is through a growing relationship with him. It's the most important thing I'm going to say today right there, okay? So if you want to go to sleep, you got the best thing right up front here, okay? It's just like any other relationship, right? If I want to know my wife, you know, I, you know, I have to be uh, recognizing it's going to take a growing relationship. If I'm going to know you, okay, we, we're going to have to have a growing relationship. What's different about God is he's infinite. He's infinite. You know, you get to know me, you know, I'm, you're going to find I'm kind of predictable, you know, kind of predictable. And, and I'm predictable, most of you are boring. But anyway, moving forward here, okay? Because uh, we're finite, right? We're finite beings, you know? God is different. He's infinite. You're never going to know all there is to know about God. You're never going to, you, you're going to spend your whole lifetime, I hope you are, trying to know God, and you're still just going to make it a thimble away, uh, along the way, okay? <laughs> Uh, but you got to be growing. you got to be growing. you got to be growing in your relationship with him. That's how you get to know God, right? Personally. Three things. Spiritual growth, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. The, 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 sp- the responsibility for your spiritual growth is on you, okay? It's on you. And uh, there's no easy button. There's no uh, express lane. <laughs> uh, it doesn't happen automatically. Uh, it doesn't happen just by putting in time. Uh, you have to do the hard work of spiritual growth. The hard work of spiritual growth. You have to practice the, the spiritual disciplines, and, and, uh, and you have to apply these things to your life to grow. Then uh, spiritual growth has seasons. If you've been a Christian very long, you know that you know, spiritual growth doesn't happen you know, consistently. Uh, sometimes, you know, your spiritual growth is going to be really fast. And a lot of times that's during times of suffering. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing will grow you faster than to go through a season of suffering in your life. Uh, sometimes you'll have, well, you feel a dry, dryness about your spiritual growth. That's, that's the normal Christian life. That's, that's what it is to be a Christian, you know. Uh, we have seasons that we, that we go through. And then spiritual growth is a process. It's a process. Uh, That's why our church has an intentional growth track. A growth track. Belong. Accept Christ, be baptized, commit to the church, connect, get into a growth group, serve, identify your purple folder, your shape, and use your shape for God. Uh, Bring, bring people to Christ, bring people to church, and worship Worship 24-7. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship by attending at least one uh, church service per week. It's an intentional growth track. It's a process. It's a process. 
So those are kind of important observations you need to know about spiritual growth. But now let's talk about four ways, four different ways for you to get to know God personally. Number one, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So this is where it starts. Your personal relationship with God begins right here, okay? You make a decision to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Savior and your Lord. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 20, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. So we get, got to get to know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. Jesus is not just a, uh, was it, was, wasn't and isn't just a great prophet or teacher or moral leader. Uh, he was the true God. He is the true God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one, the Trinity. And through that, we have eternal life. Through that, we have eternal life. We can live forever uh, because of Jesus. Our last breath on this earth can be our first breath in heaven because of Jesus, because of Jesus. And so we have to get to know him. We have to get to know Jesus Christ. And the way you get to know him is by receiving him into your life because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians two fourteen through 16, there's two different types of people. If you go to chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, there's three different types of people, all right? But that's not in the message today, okay? But there's two kinds of people. There's the natural and the spiritual. So the natural person is the person who's never received Jesus. They've never asked Jesus in their heart, okay? They've never been saved, all right? They've never turned from their sin and trusted in Christ for salvation. And the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They don't receive the things of the Spirit of God. In fact, they think it's foolish. They, they can't, the natural man can't in any way understand why in the world you'd want to give up a nice Sunday morning to come to a, a church service. What is wrong with you, okay? That is so foolish. Why in the world would you want to spend time, you know, looking at some old book that has got a lot of contradictions in it and all kinds of issues it's going to be a contradiction to the unbeliever okay because <laughs> they're the natural man you know why in the world would you want to use your time to to serve god and and to do things for the church why in the world would you want to do that okay? why in the world would you want to give your hard-earned money to 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 a church what is wrong with you okay they're going to think everything you're doing is foolish why are you waiting till marriage to have sex you know, why don't you go ahead and have sex, you know, before marriage and outside of marriage? What, what, do you, what do you, what's the, what's the deal, you know? If it feels good, just do it. Okay, that's so foolish. So foolish of you uh, to, to do that. They're, they're the natural people. They, they are spiritually bankrupt, okay? They, they don't have any spiritual discernment at all, okay? The thing that you, you, you they don't understand you, okay, <laughs> at all, you know? And if you're a natural man, you don't understand this either, okay? All right? doesn't make any sense to you. you you're not going to be able to know him till you receive him, right? Then there's the spiritual. The spiritual, verse 16 says, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive Christ, and with that, you receive the mind of Christ into your life. And now you look at the world from a different perspective. Now you see things from a different uh, perspective uh, in your life. And you can know God. So first of all, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Have you ever done that? Have you ever asked Christ in your Savior? You say, well, no, I haven't. Can I do it? Yeah, you can do it. In fact, you can do it right now. I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes. Listen. If you've already received Christ, I did that August 16th, 1968. You know what you ought to do if you've already made that decision? You ought to just thank God for your salvation right now. Just thank the Lord you're saved. But if you're here today, you've never asked Christ to be your Savior and your Lord, or you're, you're watching uh, online right now, or you're listening uh, online right now, just, just pray this prayer. The Bible says, call on the Lord to be saved. The Bible says, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. 
Invite Jesus to save you. Receive him into your life. Pray something like this from your heart to God's heart. Dear God, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Dear God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Right now, I turn from my sin, and I put my trust in Jesus. Right now, I turn from my sin, and I put my trust in Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he rose from the grave to give me eternal life. I believe he rose from the grave to give me eternal life. And right now I say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me right now. Save me right now. Listen, if you invited him in, I'm telling you, based not on my authority, because I don't have that authority, or this church's authority, we don't have that authority, but on the very authority of God and his word, if you prayed that and meant it from your heart to his heart, he came into your life, okay? Lord, thank you for salvation. Thank you that we have the mind of Christ and that we can get to know you because of that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it doesn't stop there. Number two, prioritize your spiritual growth. If you're going to have a growing relationship, you've got to make it a priority. And the Bible's very clear. God is not going to take the leftovers, all right? You know, the Ten Commandments... What's the first one? The first of the ten. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. God expects you to make him a priority. The Bible says, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Seek first, what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. I mean, you know, I love that because it tells us uh, God gives his blessing when you put him first. God gives his blessing when you put him first. Uh, you know, one area that you ought to prioritize for spiritual growth is church attendance, coming to church. You know, you need to make it a priority, you know. You need to make it a priority. The Bible says we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, you know. And, and you know, the, there's a big deal going on right now in our culture today. You know, people are not going to church, and people that go to church are going less and less. They're letting other priorities, which are really not the priority, get in the way, okay? And it's a big problem, okay? It, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a big deal these days, you know? And, and we got to understand, you know, God expects us to make church a priority, you know, in our lives. And we need to do our best to build our lives around that. Yes, there are times you're going to be sick, of course. Yes, you're going to have vacation, of course. And yes, sometimes, as hard as you try, you might have to work sometimes, okay, or whatever. But those should be the exceptions to the rule, okay? I thank God. I give God praise. I grew up in a home where I never asked if we were going to church. I have no memory in my life of ever asking my parents that question. I knew we were going to church Sunday morning. I knew we were going to church Sunday night. I knew we were going to church Wednesday night. I had a drug problem growing up. I was drugged to church every time the doors were open, okay? <laughs> And Lord, help us when we had revival or some other event going on at the church. Did I always like that? i got to tell you, I didn't, okay? I'm not going to tell you, oh, I was always, oh, it's Wednesday night. Can't wait to see you or whatever. No, I can't say that. That was true, okay? But I rise up and call my parents, bless it, okay? Because I didn't have the other drug problem, I can tell you that much right now, okay? And the point is, you got to make things a priority. You've got to establish that in the routine of your life and the routine of your home, okay? And God doesn't want your leftovers. God doesn't want you to kind of work him in around all this other stuff that really isn't stuff, okay? He wants you to start your week. Sunday is the beginning of the week. Did you know that? Not Monday. He designed it so you would start your week in corporate worship with other believers to prepare you for the week ahead. Isn't it a cool plan? I think it's a pretty cool plan that he would say, okay, c come, come and get with the other believers and get all fired up, you know, because you got a rough week ahead of you, okay? Number three, challenge your spiritual routines. Now, this is important, what I'm getting ready to tell you here. All, everything I'm saying is important, but I just want to emphasize this. Now, listen to me carefully, okay? you got to develop routines, and you have to challenge those routines, 
You have to challenge them. You have to poke them. You have to, you have to step them up, if you will. You've got to grow. You've got to grow. Number one, challenge your Bible study. Challenge your Bible study. You know, Hebrews 5 talks about two different uh, people, groups, when it comes to the Word. And it's those that only uh, take the milk of the Word. And then there are those that take the meat of the Word. And verse 12 is a rebuke. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk, circle the word milk, and not solid food. So he's rebuking these people. Uh, whoever wrote Hebrews, we're not sure who it is. I believe it was Paul, but it may not be. Okay? This is just one book we're not 100% sure about. Okay? Um, you say, I am. No, you're not. Okay, let's move on. Okay? Uh, he says, you, here's what he says to them. Hey, you've been saved a long time. You ought to be a teacher of the word. You've been saved long enough that you ought to be able to teach. It, it may mean a formal setting, teach in the church or whatever. Or it may mean like, you teach your kids or you can you know, teach your coworkers, or you can teach whoever will listen to you. It means you're, you know your Bible and you're able to communicate. He says, no, you're still drinking the milk. You're still drinking the milk. You, you're not taking in solid food. And here's the problem. Everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Circle the word babe. Draw a line between milk and babe. So babies, you know, I got six grandchildren. You know, I've, I've been around a lot of breastfeeding, like seven or eight years or whatever, okay? And one more on the way, okay? New, new one coming around here, so we'll have some more breastfeeding going on, okay? Whatever, okay? And uh, whether it's, you know, breast milk or, you know, whatever kind of milk you give them or whatever, that's up to you. I mean, you know, babies, that's all they can have, you know? That's, that's, that's all they can have. You can't, you can't give them a steak. You can't give them, you know, chicken or whatever, you know? Uh, they can't handle the meat. They can't handle the meat. But you know what? You know what? It, you know, Olivia, she's six, six years old. If you just saw her sucking on milk all the time, you'd say, what's wrong with that child? You think that child is, is messed up? She's not messed up. She's plenty of meat, okay, or whatever, okay? And so, same for Salima, and, and down the road you go there, Caleb, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Camden, I should say. Um, but Caleb does too, by the way. Anyway, let me get off this point. I'm going to get messed up here, okay? But the point I'm trying to make, you get what I'm saying, right? All right? You would think they're weird, but in the church we've got people sitting here right here. You've been saved a long time, and you're sucking on the milk, and we think you're just normal. You're not normal. You're abnormal. You're abnormal. You're strange. That's not how Christians behave, okay? Don't look at me like that. Some of you are mad right now. I love it when I see you mad. It gets me excited, okay? It gets me excited, okay? But solid food, circle those two words, solid food. Solid food belongs to those who are of a full age. Circle those words, to full age, full age. And the difference here, these people have discernment. See, the other group, they, they can be fooled, okay? They can, they can be fooled very easily. But this person who is mature, uh, they, they get the solid stuff in their lives. And they can discern good and evil. They, they hear a preacher, you know, you all that are on the meet, you, you know what you're supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be going home and looking in your Bible and make sure that I spoke the truth. All right? That, it, you, you're not supposed to trust me, okay? You're supposed to get in your own Bible and make sure I'm giving you the truth, okay? That's your responsibility. Remember, your spiritual growth is your responsibility, okay? Now, challenge your Bible study, okay? So what does that mean? Number one, maybe you don't have Bible study. Why don't you start, okay? You say, I don't know what to do. Well, you happen to be sitting in a church, not to brag, there's probably less than 1% of the population of churches in America who every single week, 52 weeks of the year, put together a specific Bible study for you, okay? It's called the growth guide. The front of it, we call it the big idea. You go inside, and Monday through Friday, there's a daily reading and two or three little questions asked. 
All right, you say, well, I'm already doing that. Okay, challenge it. Challenge it. Okay, I know the key verse. Well, good. Why don't you memorize it? Why don't you challenge yourself a little bit? You know, you, can, you see these topics. You ever heard of Google? Anybody ever heard of Google? Why don't you Google something? Say, ooh, that's interesting. The joy of Easter. I think I'll Google that, okay? Rejoice in the Lord always. I think I'm going to Google that right there, okay? Challenge yourself. This is, honestly, this is mainly milk, to be honest with you, okay? You can do this in minutes. Maybe you need to do more. Maybe you need to do more. Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge your Bible study. You'll grow. You'll grow. Challenge your praying. What's the biggest prayer request you got right now? What's your biggest one? The Bible says, and I love it, I mentioned this verse last week, I couldn't remember the reference, so I put it in here today. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. It's Psalm 8110. I don't know if you remember, I don't know, some service I just bring up things I can't remember, so I don't even know if it was this service. But I, I talked about that verse, I said, I'm not sure where it's at, okay? I think I said Psalm 84, I'm not sure, I knew it was Psalms, okay? Be a big mouth, God says. Open your mouth, ah, open it wide. How wide is your mouth right now? What's your big... Okay, don't even answer that question, okay? <laughs> Open your mouth up, you know? How about this? Challenge your pain when it comes to confession. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Two things you can do. Number one, move from general to specific. Challenge it. Challenge it. Some of you are confessing sin... But you, you hear that, Lord, forgive me for all my sin. Well, that's a starting point. Challenge it. Be specific. Say, God, forgive me for the, what I just did right there. That thought I had or that bitterness I have or where I treated my spouse or my laziness and not doing what I should do or whatever. Uh, God, forgive me for that thing, okay? A move from, uh, challenge it by moving from slow to fast. Slow to fast. Some of you, you just, you're slow. You know, you, you'll group them together. You'll say, Lord, I remember Monday, sometime on Mondays. I know it's Thursday, Lord, but I want to go ahead and talk to you about what happened on Monday, okay? Now, again, that's a starting point. But move from slow to fast. How quick should you confess your sin? As quick as you can. I mean, I mean honestly, it, you do it as quick as you can. Challenge it, challenge it, challenge these spiritual disciplines in your life. How about giving? The Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. You want to be more blessed? I thought you did, okay? Know that there's blessing in giving. Some of you don't give anything. Why don't you challenge it and give a one-time gift? Some of you have never given a dime to this church, okay? Why don't you challenge it and give a dime, okay? Give whatever you, give something, give five bucks, do something, okay? Some of you give periodically. Why don't you start making it regular, you know? Some of you, I call it tip or whatever. That's great, okay? It all adds up. Why don't you move up to a tithe? Give a full tithe to God. Challenge it. Some of you tithe. Why don't you support the missions program over your tithe? Why don't you go beyond that and be a sacrificial giver, okay? Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge your serving. The Bible says stir up the gift of God. You have a gift, spiritual gifts. Challenge it. Okay? Some of you need to challenge it. You don't even have a ministry in the church. Get a ministry. Here's a question. I'm not moving on. Where are you going? Okay? <laughs> Stop it. You have a pastor. Okay? All right. I do need to shut up. We got communion. Okay? But I'm, I'm bleeding this stuff here today. Okay? Um, Okay, listen, you have a ministry. What can you do to make it better? What can I do to preach better? I need to do that. I need to, I need, I need to challenge myself to be a better preacher. If you're a singer, what can you do to be better at singing? Challenge it. Challenge it. Usher, nursery worker, 
You know, whatever you are, okay? Challenge it. Make yourself better. And then how about eating and exercising? I knew you were in a rush to get over there to that, okay? So let's go on over there. I know you saw it over there, and you could not wait till we talked about this, okay? How about your eating? How about your exercising? Challenge it. You know, Jesus loved you with his body. Did you know that? The Bible says he, he bore your sins in his own body. He hung on a tree and he, he loved you with his body. Here's the question. Are you loving God with your body? The Bible says you're to present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Holy. Doing what is acceptable to God. You know, how does that apply to your eating habits and your exercise habits? Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it. Invite people to church. Invite people to church. You know, one of the best ways to get to know God personally is to be used of God to bring people to church. The Bible says go into the highways and hedges and do what? Compel them to come in. And guess what? Easter weekend is right in front of us now. Take these invite cards. Be personal in your approach. Be positive in your presentation. Be plentiful in your contacts. Grow personally knowing God. Let's pray. Those helping out with communion, please take your places and let's pray right now. So the Bible says before we partake of communion that we're to examine ourselves. And if you have known sin in your life, I just want you right now to be specific. And I want to encourage you to confess it to God. And determine in your heart that you're going to forsake that sin. This is to prepare ourselves for this time of communion. Take a moment. Take time to be holy, the Bible says. Take time to be holy. It takes time to be holy. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this special time, this sacred time together. Thank you for this table that we come to today to remember our Lord Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us. In Jesus' name, amen.